Agentic AI is the name of the game in 2025. We are all already experiencing this to a certain degree in our beloved personal productivity assistants, like for example, ChatGPT. Two years ago, when you used ChatGPT, you were basically just plainly talking to a large language model. But very gradually, step by step, it gained additional capabilities. It was able to search the web or even write its own code and actually execute that code. And those are some super useful capabilities in the personal productivity realm. But in the enterprise, it's a different story, even though it might not seem that way, but it's actually a way harder problem to solve. If you are working in enterprise, just think about your daily work. What do you do every day? You pretty much always work with some sort of processes that are usually horrible and complicated and not really well documented. You probably spend a good amount of your time searching for the right data that is always hidden in like three different databases, five different network storages and Jira and a box note and whatever. And then at some point you're sick of it, you quit, you find another job just to find out. It's a very same mess, just in a different flavor. And then it takes you like a year or something before you find your way around in that mess and before you actually start being productive again. This kind of work, this kind of struggle feels really stupid, really unintelligent sometimes, but it's way more intricate and way more complex than you might even realize when you're doing it because it requires so much gut feeling, so much intuition, so much flexibility that Gen AI systems have really been struggling with dealing with those kind of problems. And here comes a Gen AI to the rescue. This might sound a little exaggerated, and honestly it is, but it is a whole new paradigm that is pretty much a perfect fit for tackling exactly those very tricky problems. And to understand that, we have to take a quick look into what agents actually are. I made a whole video about it where I go into really quite some depth about how they work, but here's gonna be a really, really quick overview. So what is an agent? There are like a million different definitions. Every company likes to pick the definition that best fits the sales strategy. Don't be confused if you hear so many different things what an agent is supposed to be. I like a very simple definition, which is like probably the most vanilla definition. That is a agent is a large language model that can use tools. So to understand what that means, let's first look at what is not an agent. Like this is not an agent. You get your question, you send it to a large language model and you get your answer back. This is what ChatGPT used to be like two years ago. There is no external knowledge coming in. There's no actions going out. It's just your text question in, your text answer out. That's it. The difference between that and an agent is mainly the tools. So an agent is in its core a large language model that is prompted in a specific way that you don't have to do yourself. It's handled by the agentic framework to be aware of the tools that it has available to fulfill any given task. Those tools can be literally anything, but in its core, they are just basic software components, not necessarily any generative AI magic in them. It can be a simple calculator. It can be the ability to execute a web search. Very common uh, document search, like a retrieval augmented generation. What we will see interacting with an API based booking system. So whenever this agentic system is given a question, the agentic framework will make sure that the large language model has a description of all the tools that it has available. And due to its specific prompting, the large language model can then define the steps that it thinks are necessary to answer that question. And the agentic framework will then execute those actual tools. For example, do a web search and take the results that come back and put it back into the prompt. And the model can then reason if it needs to do additional steps, or if it's got all the information it needs to generate an answer. That answer is then presented to the user. Everything that's happening inside here is hidden or in many systems you can kind of click a button and then you see the, the, the reasoning that happened under the hood. If you like this kind of content and you want to help me make more of it, please like and subscribe to this video. That really helps. What I want to show you in this video is one of many ways how you can build a agentic system in the Watson X ecosystem. The product that we will be focusing on in this video is the Agentic AI flagship product Watson X Orchestrate. The problem that I have is it is really hard to show AI use cases for enterprise because they only make sense in an enterprise. They are only great if you use internal information and internal systems, internal processes, and we are on YouTube here. So I cannot show you any internal stuff, obviously. So the solution that I came up with is I simply invented a company. Welcome to Galaxium Travels. We offer state-of-the-art luxury space travel for the 22nd century. While this is intentionally a little bit ridiculous, it serves a very serious purpose because this repo here contains a lot of made-up documents that we can now use as examples showing retrieval augmented generation. And they're actually very authentic because they look horrible. 
Uh, they've got weird formatting, great many different colors, all sorts of stuff, a lot of numbers in them. I'm pretty sure that companies in the 22nd century will still have the same horrible data structures and it's still going to be PDF, probably. I actually went one step further uh, because PDFs are nice and we can do a retrieval of my generation with them. But I also created a whole fake booking system, which is a very primitive mock-up of what a booking system would look like, where you as a user can register, get latest flight information and actually book a flight. That is a great set of capabilities to use Agentic AI to make it more efficient. I don't want to go into any detail here. You're very welcome to check it out yourself, but it's a very simple Python-based, fast API-based application. Just uses a very simple data model in a SQLite database and can just host it as a container wherever you want. I have also included the deployment steps that you need if you want to run it in uh, IBM Code Engine. And that is exactly what I did. I'm running the booking system here in Code Engine, which is a really cool serverless container as a service kind of offering. But that's totally a side note. That's not the focus of this video at all. Uh, but to understand, and what we're building here is an agentic system, we have to look at what we have to work with. So this is our booking system. It doesn't have any UI except of this, this fast API interface. Well, but we don't need one because we are going to use it in an agentic system that's going to do all the interaction for us. So, but let's spend a minute to get to know our booking system a little bit and explore what we have here. First endpoint we have is the flights endpoint. If we try it out, it gives us a list of all the currently available flights from Earth to Mars with five seats available and a price of one million whatever currency they have in the 22nd century. The next endpoint we have, if we close that again, is to book a flight for a user. And we've got a bit of a caveat here because we need a name of that user and we also need a user ID and those things have to match for a booking to be valid. So before we can do a booking, we have to register ourselves as a user. And let me try if I do it without registration. I'm just gonna use the flight ID one. We get a error back for for user not found or name does not match user ID. So what we need to do first is register ourselves as a user. And for that, we will need the register a new user endpoint. And we're gonna do that real quick. And fire it off and we get a success. Our user ID is 11, our name Max Yesh. We can now go back to our booking system, book a flight for us. Let's change our user ID to 11. Our name is Max Yesh. We want to book the flight ID one, which is like the one to Mars for like a million dollar. Execute that. Now it works. We are booked with the booking ID 21 on the flight one. The status booked. I guess that's enough of our basic functionality of our booking system. We also have some things that we can cancel bookings, we can list all the bookings that we have. But that's kind of the gist of how it works. Now we want to make those API endpoints available as tools to our agentic system. And that is actually really easy. Uh, here it even got a very convenient link that gives us the open API JSON, which is, I mean, kind of tricky to read for us humans, but it's just a standardized way of describing APIs. And that's also what Watson X Orchestrate can accept. Unfortunately, we do have to make some small modifications. We have to change the version here and we also have to to add the URL as a server object. Check out the GitHub repo if you want to see the details. It's only two things you got to change. It's actually pretty simple. Now that we have seen what we have to work with, let's take a moment to think about what we want to build in this demo. We want to build an agent that's got the booking system, so all the APIs that we've just seen as a tool, and also a document search, so retrieval log minus generation. So looking in the documents that we've seen in that GitHub repo. So if you look at that, a very, very simple diagram. We've got our user, which is kind of privileged, which is why she's wearing a crown. She interacts through a browser with a chat interface that is connected to our agent. That agent has access to all the APIs that we've just seen. And it's also got access to a vector store, or just a database that's got all the relevant documents that we want to be publicly facing in it. So it can also answer general questions about Galaxium travels. So this is the very rough outline of what we want to build. So let's go back. So with all that in place, we jump straight into what's next orchestrate and we're going to create a new agent. So you can see the process from scratch Call it Galaxium Travel Agent Live. It needs a description. Now let's create. And here we are in the agent builder. Let's go through the different things we see here step by step. First thing we see is the model that we're using is the Llama 3290B vision model, which is a pretty beefy model, which is totally fine for a small scale application. But if you are building something that you're gonna roll out to a large audience, you might consider using a smaller model here. Then we see our description that we provided. And here's something very interesting is the agent style. Basically, those are just two different styles of prompting a model to behave like an agent. I'm planning to go into a lot more detail on this in an upcoming video. We use LangViews to really look under the hood. But for now, we'll just use React because just simply it's the most common way of doing it. In practice, you will just have to try which agent style works better for your problem. 
We can also add voice as input and output, which is pretty awesome, but we're not going to use that for now. Here is a very interesting part that is knowledge. This is the integrated rack or a tree log administration capability. If you want to know more about rack, you can check out my other video. Uh, somewhere here probably. It is pretty much that simple to use. Uh, we just click on upload files and then we can just choose them from our local system. I've just chosen a few PDFs that I find suitable to be embedded into a user facing chatbot. Just click open and upload as text moment. Uh, after less than a minute, we've got those documents here integrated. And now we have to add a description to that knowledge base. Okay, so we've got our rack system ready. Now if we scroll further down, we get to the point where it gets really interesting. And those are the tools. And as I promised, this is really simple. You just go to add tools, got a lot of different options here. I've also got a catalog and that flow builder, like there's a lot of stuff hiding here, but I'm not gonna go into any detail. For now, we're just gonna go with the simplest route and import an open API specification. We could do something very similar with MCP and I'm probably gonna do that in a future video, but as I said, really simple for now. And if I click here, just have to find the open API JSON file that we have there from our browser. If I open that, validating it next, ta-da. We see all the endpoints that we've also seen in our last API UI together with the descriptions. Just choose all of them and done. There we go. Got six tools imported. I've already been playing around with this a little bit and I found that the agent tries to answer too many questions with the knowledge out of those PDFs. So I added a little bit here in behavior and just told it to prefer to use the available tools whenever possible. After messing around with it a little, I think it works really great and we can deploy it so we can explore it together. Just click deploy. We don't have any connections configured. Connections are credentials that you need if you have tools that require credentials. We don't have that in our very simple scenario. So we hit deploy. Oh, there it is. It's available. And now we just jump back to the front page and there we can choose it. So let's ask it some questions. What packages do you offer to go to the moon? Mm -hmm. That is a nice answer, but let's see where it comes from. If we click here and that reasoning, that's what I mentioned, the stuff that's happening under the hood that is usually hidden from the user. This is what we're shown. If you remember that slide, that's this is what we're shown. All the stuff under the hood is hidden by default, but we can take a look if we want to. And here we very much want to, and we see that it decided to answer that question based on its on the document that we uploaded, so based on the rack system that it has available. And that's what it retrieved, and that's how it came to its answer. Now that we know that, we can ask, what are the next available flights? What are the next available flights to the moon? That also looks like a pretty good answer. And if we look under the hood, you can see it took one step, executed one tool, and it got all available flights. That is very good. It asked the API and it got a very long response. That is like all the different flights. We, we've seen that before in that, that little API UI. Uh, and out of that, it created that answer, which is the one flight to the moon that is available. Now let's ask it to book us on that flight. Nice, book me on that flight, please. Ah, and that is very interesting. So why is that interesting? You can see you cannot unfold anything. So it didn't actually execute any tools, but it just looked at the tools that it has available and came to the conclusion that it has to provide the user ID for that booking. Let me bring bring up tools here again. Um, And if you look at the book a flight for a user tool, because that's what it intended to use. And it looked into the description here and it says book a site for a specific, requires a user ID. And there's another note here. The user has to be registered first. So just by looking at the tools that it has available, our agent knows what it needs and kind of plans ahead and asks us for the information that is necessary. Okay, let's play dump here and say, I don't have a user ID. Uh -huh. And again, we cannot expand anything. So it didn't actually execute any tools, but it told us what it already knew. It says to re register a new user, I need your name and email. Can you please provide them? Okay, let's do that. Great, my name is Max Yash. My email is max.yash at email.com. Here we already see it is now executing a tool. Oh, nice. We have been booked on flight ID 2 to the moon. Yes. So let's see what happened. It executed two different tools, which I have a suspicion what happened. Let's look in step one. Register a new user. Name Max Yash. Email max.yash at email.com. And the output is we have our user ID. We are registered now. And with that, it executed the next tool without asking us. It just knew that it had to do that. It's booking us on that flight with the flight ID too, which is the one that we are interested in. It used the user ID that it got from the last tool call. And with that, it successfully booked us on that flight and we are now flying to the moon. Ta-da! Well, we can now do a few other things. We can also book a flight to Mars. Nice. It successfully retrieved all the flights and extracted the one to Mars for us, the ID one. Book me on that as well. We're on a spending spree here. 
So that was some really interesting behavior that I observed and fixed off camera, but I really want to show you what happened. After I said, booked me on that as well, it tried to do that, but it got an arrow, failed to execute, blah, 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 blah. User not found, name this on match user ID. Hmm. So I just set it again and it did not just try the same thing again, but it looked at its tools again and realized that it's got a tool that's called get user by name that returns the ID. So I tried to check the ID given my name and email and that also returned an error. And then I checked my little backend and it turned out I had two instances running and in one of them that was being addressed here, I was actually not registered. So it turned out it was a backend problem and I fixed it. Like I actually fixed it in the backend and I said, now try again. And then it did the right thing and it just tried again and now it worked. So the agent was very much aware of things not working and tried different strategies, which will all not work because the backend was broken. But still, if I prompt it to try it again, it, it tried different things and the end after the problem was fixed, it actually really worked. So with that very interesting observation, I'm done with everything I wanted to show you. With that very simple example, I am barely scratching the surface of what is possible with Agentic AI in general. I mean, obviously, I mean, that was like the most simple example ever, but also what what things Orchestrate can do. I've got a whole set of new topics and videos that I want to make. So stay tuned. And as